car at Apple Developer Center in Singapore, which is not the very first one. So you have some in Asia, like in Shanghai, in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what are the difference between Singapore branches? We have four now. So we have one in Singapore here today. We're kind of unveiling. As you mentioned, we have India, we have China, and then we have the US with Cupertino. Really, they have a lot of similarities. The idea behind the Developer Center is customized space for developers to come together, learn new technologies from us, uh, for us to learn from developers, which happens every time uh, we get together. But we have a mix of different types of rooms that really make it possible to do everything from a classroom setting, maybe more lecture-based, to smaller settings where you can have briefings and more conversation and actually get work done. You can bring your code here and you know take your app, hopefully, to the next level through whatever you've learned uh, mm -hmm. here in the Developer Center. So what type of activity will take place here? So there's going to be bigger get-togethers that are that more of that classroom type of environment. Um, like a workshop? Yeah, a workshop. Yeah, so you'll see we have three rooms that each seat about 40 people. We can open up those walls and that can be as big as 120 people. So that kind of workshop, maybe we just introduced a new API or a new SDK or something like that. And you want to just come learn about it really quickly. All the way down to more of the one-on-one, -on -one, very custom to you. You bring your project, you sit side by side with somebody and maybe we're looking at your code with you and saying, oh, if you do things a little bit differently and really kind of everything in between. So that's going to be not only technical topics, but but maybe it's topics around how to run your business, how to take advantage of the capabilities of the App Store. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's things like design. How can you build more inclusively for different audiences? Really, all sorts of different topics are right. coming up here at the Developer Center. So basically, are there many specialists and experts based here at Developer Center? We have, yeah, folks that are based here in Singapore, but as a global company, we've got people all over the world. And so a big area of focus for the Developer Center is making sure we have really good uh, ways to bring those people in virtually as well. And so every single room that you're gonna be meeting in has the ability to bring someone in who might be in Cupertino, they might be in Europe, they might be in another part of Asia. Wherever the expertise is, we wanna make sure that we can get access to them. And so whether it's the local folks who are here, which is lots of great expertise, expertise or somebody internationally, it's a good place to connect. We also have the segment for the labs. Can you tell us more about the devices provided here? Especially like we are in the Asian country, we haven't yet experienced the Vision Pro that much compared to, to in the US. So are you also like uh, prepared to support? those new released product and devices for developers. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's really great about coming to the developer center is that we can have a range of hardware. Maybe you haven't had a chance to run your app natively on a device yet. Maybe it's because you just don't have it yet. Maybe it's not uh, available yet, like you gave the example of Vision Pro. Singapore has been one of the original locations that we've been having Vision Pro Labs since they started last year. And so now that the facility is open, we're excited to continue hosting those. Mm. Um, here, but it's, it really is about, you know, often people will bring their code on their, their Mac and maybe they get access to, like I said, a, a range of devices because maybe they don't have every iPad that we have or right. something like that. But mm -hmm. the facility offers the ability for them to, to do those types of things. Like, can you say how many devices do we need to book in advance to do the product trial? And I'm um, sorry, like a bunch of questions in one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you think about, so we talked about the workshops earlier, those are going to be a lot more lecture based and those probably less customized for the individual that's attending versus something like a one on one consultation, mm -hmm. where it's probably the case that when you book that one on one consultation, we're going to follow up with you mm -hmm. to make sure that we have the right person there, the right equipment there, those types of things. And so the more customized it gets, the more of a conversation we'll be able to have with you as a developer to make sure that you're getting the most out of your time here. Basically, the developers from Southeast Asia who fly over here to Singapore, what is the expect duration that people need to be staying and be finished to finalize the application or the consultation? I think a lot of people will, because of how centrally located 
Singapore is in the region, a lot of people will be able to do day trips. I mean, we've talked to a lot of people here today who had a one hour flight, a one and a half hour flight, two hours, where it's just very easy to just get in and get out. We welcome folks coming regularly if they are able to schedule a couple of things here in back to back days, that's fantastic too. But I think because of how centrally located it is, we'll see folks that are able to do that pretty easily. What are the trends that developers from Southeast Asia should know about being successful and, and have a high achievement? Are there any like you know specialties that each region in the world has to focus on and make it different shape to the market? One of the things that we often tell developers is if they're using the tools that we're providing them, we're using the APIs, the languages that we're providing, they're really going to be set up for success as things continue to change and grow over time. Uh, we put a lot of effort into you know, specific APIs, making sure that we know that there's a new piece of hardware coming in the future that is going to work a little bit differently. And we build that into the API when we create it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the more you can sort of use the native tools and technologies that we've provided, the better off you'll be in terms of future-proofing your app. A good example of this is many years ago, we had an iPhone that was a, you know one screen size, but we knew we were making bigger screen sizes. And so we started building those capabilities into the SDK. And then you look at something like iPad, and all of a sudden an iPad has multitasking where you can have multiple apps on the display at the same time. All of that stuff we thought about and built into our APIs. Mm -hmm. So you using them in the way that we sort of built them means that you get a lot of scale that you might not appreciate in the moment. That's a pretty universal recommendation that we have with folks. I don't know that there's anything specific to Southeast Asia. I think folks are doing a great job here. any trends that WWC this year might be spotlight, so we plan ahead of time <laughs> and working on it, <laughs> focus uh, on it. The trend is, I'm sure we'll keep folks busy like we always do. Yeah, set aside time and, and be ready to learn. I have some experience on um, Apple Vision Pro, as like we are a big fan after we've been tried in WWC last year. It's such a great opportunity and we like thought about it. We want to be a developer because we want to know more about Vision OS. As of we already discussed over Thai developers, are there any requirement of, you know, if there are some Thai developers who want to make an application and come here closer to the operating system, do they need to have the application on the iPad first? What stage they have to be in? They come with an idea, come with your app on your Mac. So start with Mac first. You well, it must doesn't have, have to be a Mac app. It just needs to be your project needs to be on your Mac is mm -hmm. what I mean. Have um, to be quite. Yeah. Physical project has to be settled first. I mean, I think we'll gladly walk you through, you know, your idea. But the idea is, what I, what I was trying to say is, you need to have a project. You need mm -hmm. to have started. It's not just like some drawings on a piece of paper. We want you to come and make it as Solid. productive as possible mm -hmm. for you. So bring your code is mm -hmm. really what I mean on your Mac and uh, we'll go from there. How you can make the community can you just give us some hint or some example that how the community in, in Shanghai or in uh, Indian grow? I mean, one of the things that we're most excited about here is obviously we get to connect with developers, which is very exciting for us, but we're excited for developers to be able to talk to each other and use mm. this space to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. One of the things that hopefully you saw a little bit today is just how generous they are with each other. If they learn something, they're excited by it, they're proud about it, and they want to share it with their peers, even if they're maybe even in a competitive space. It's just the excitement of discovery that they want to share. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully the space can be used to not only uh, have us meeting with them and them learning from us and vice versa, but also bringing them together and having a place for people to meet up and share ideas and teach each other too. If there are some developer watching this, what do you want to say with them and how they can just like engage and connect with them, the space here? Yeah, go to our website see what activities are available here. We welcome you, whether you're just getting started or you're an expert, we've got folks that can help you out. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here at the Developer Center. Cool, thank you very much. Cool.